So Dr. Emma Nalima, you prefer to be called one acre farm? Let me say it and tell it. Yeah, for many people think that funding should be done on the first chunks of land you have to justify. We've also partnered with the Stabic Business Incubator to show folks in Moima how it can be done on a small piece of land for the great efficiency. How about you step forward and come share with us your experience with regard to getting the right funding standard to supply the oil and gas industry. And as she comes, please, a tomato is a tomato in the oil, in the oil and gas industry. Not these good things we eat in the market. That's what you need to ask. Over. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It's very difficult to talk to people after lunch. Mm -hmm. I hope I have enough energy to make you stay awake. Yeah, uh, we are getting the right, uh, getting the right farming standards to supply the oil and gas sector. Uh, now, my work has actually been made very simple today, because actually since yesterday we've been talking about so many things, and then uh, the previous presenters have been telling us we have to be certified, we have to be doing this, we have to be doing, even at Akama just told us the same thing. And sometimes we think uh, the, it's okay with uh, other companies can do that, or other sectors, but with the agriculture sector, we, we kind of think since it's soil, since it's dirty, we still need to do certain things, you know, uh, the way we, we, our parents did them or our grandparents. But no, if you want to work in the oil and gas sector, as either people, uh, as farmers delivering to different, uh, in the whole value chain, then you have to do things right. And how are we going to do these things right? Oh. Where do I go? Okay. Now, I'm just going to take you through uh, things about how are we going to do good agricultural practices. Or well, these are the standards. If you want to do, be a farmer, if you want to do anything in agriculture and you're going to supply the oil and gas sector, you have to make sure that these things are done very well. Now, there are different, there are different principles of uh, good farming practices, but I'm going to, I divided them into four, I mean into five. And these are food and safety. First of all, why are we even doing, uh, why are we making good uh, farming practices? This is to improve the safety and quality of farm produce while at the same time protecting the environment and safeguarding the health of the, of the workers. Now, divided into four or five things. Food safety, environment management, worker health, safety and welfare, produce quality, and general requirements. So, there are many different agricultural practices, but um, of course when you think about agriculture, when you think about farming, especially, the challenge we have is that in farming, when we talk about farming or agriculture, all we think about is crops, right? We rarely think about the, 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 the livestock. So, but, uh, so when, how do we start? We start by preparing the soil. We start by preparing the soil and then you sow after you sow, you irrigate. After you irrigate, you are going to either harvest. And then you as a farmer are going to stop there maybe. And then another person takes it on. But this other person going to take on this is also having, you have to do all the things right, okay? I did two different things like you see. Uh, you prepare the soil, you, you sow and uh, as you're doing that, you're also thinking about the environment. You're thinking about how you're doing this. You're protecting yourself, you're protecting the crops, you're protecting the, 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 the workers, you're protecting the environment, and then you're harvesting, and then storage at the same time. So many times as farmers, after you've planted everything, you stop there. And even we don't think so much about the storage, we don't think so much about so many other things. But this is what we're going to do. Now, I ended up having to put, of course I'm a pet, so, and I said we normally leave out livestock, and I wanted us to also think about the livestock, because those, these different things also work together. Crops and livestock, when, when uh, I think it was 
uh, the presenter from Petroleum Authority. She showed us all the things we have to supply. She showed us how many. Actually, uh, uh, I when my the person I'm sitting next to was like, hmm, doctor, so many chickens. I mean, ten thousand eggs. Then he went ahead and calculated, and he thought he for him to supply, he needed two thousand no twenty eight thousand chickens, birds, layers. So you have to also think about this as well. In livestock, of course, you have to think about either the forage, the concentrate, and then how the manure or how the dung is dispensed, how the soil is also uh, treated to feed the animal, the, to grow feed for animals, and also the crops as well. So crop rotation. Don't mind about the chemical, uh, that was chemistry, so don't mind, about, don't mind so much about the, the the structures there, but it's about knowing what to do when. Okay. Um, now, first, food safety. When we think about food safety, what are we thinking about? We are thinking about like the site history and management. Imagine you're a farmer, you're going to start farming, or oh, you have this big chunk of land, very good. But then you have to know how is this land? What is is it contaminated in the first place? Is it? Uh, I remember. Um, um, I think in history, there's this place, is it in Japan where they, they threw a lot of bombs? Which place is that even right now? They tell us even right now when you go there, you have malformations. Huh? Historian, Nagasaki. <laughs> Hiroshima, yeah, I think it was in geography or history, I don't remember. <laughs> no, I didn't do this. Okay, so anyway, so the site, what is in this site? How is the soil, okay? Because remember, you're going to start growing maybe tomatoes, but you need to know the soil. What kind of soil is it anyway? Is it good for the crops to grow? Hmm? And the planting material. What kind of planting materials are you looking at? The planting material, I'll give you an example. We were in uh, Hoima, like uh, Simon has said. So we are helping people in Hoima, and then when we get there, they are told that, oh my dear, so. The, the supplier wants maybe a certain type of tomatoes and then they buy these tomatoes, they buy the seeds and when they get there actually, after they've grown the seeds, it's not the type of tomato that they want, it's not the type of crop that they want, but they bought these seeds. So the planting material, how is it, is it actually good in the first place or is it already infested or is it already like, it's, it's not ready to, to be grown? It could be good material, but the storage, the way that it was stored, it could have been the right material, but the storage of that planting material also before you plant it matters. Is it expired? Is it, you know, ready to plant? So all those things we have to think about it, then genetically modified organisms. Of course, I have to say this, this is the contention because depending, uh, uh, we are dealing with international uh, markets and everything, so you have to think, if in Uganda maybe this law was um, uh, uh, maybe passed, and yet where you're going to supply to is not possible. So you have to think of which plant you're growing and which, you know, how is it genetically modified and also you have to look at the standards or the rules and, uh, rules and regulations of that country you're exporting to or that place you're growing your things to. Then fertilizers and soil additives. Again, how are these fertilizers, the quantity, the quality, the dosage, okay, all these, but even then, you have to have fast tested, fast tested your soil to find out that, oh, this soil actually needs this kind of fertilizer. The challenge we have is like, oh, I have soil, oh, I need to put fertilizer. And then you don't even know how much fertilizer you're putting in. And you're just putting. But you have to first go ahead and check how much, okay, if it's a crop, if it's a, it's a, if it's a, if it's a tomato again, how was the soil? And then if you tested this soil, how much of the fertilizer are you supposed to take, okay? And in which quantities, and in which do yeah, quantities, dosages, and in which roots? Because some fertilizers are sprayed, some are put in the soil, some are on top. All these things you have to think about. Then, um, traceability, as in where did you buy this fertilizer, or where did you buy this seed? Because in the event that something has happened, you still have a fallback position, you can go back. I've just been, I think I was talking to, oh, he's here. William, and then he tells us he's, I think, in Noya, and he planted um, soybean. Was it soybean or soda? Sunflower. Oh, sunflower. So, and he's there, he's, he's actually a contract farmer, and then he gets there, he planted, has done all the things, and then the things then germinate. 
Okay? So now, he has to go back and find out, mm -hmm, where did I buy from? But if he went somewhere in Chikubo, I hope there's no one in there. It's okay for someone to be in Chikubo. But if he went somewhere in Chikubo, no label, no nothing, you buy because you know in Uganda we like, I have this saying that cheap is expensive and expensive is cheap. So when someone tells you uh, like a socket of like uh, tomatoes or is uh, 100 seeds is 40,000, 50,000, like, ah, then you go somewhere where there's no label in it, a small cover like this, and you're like, hmm, give me for, how much is that? 10,000. 10,000 for 1,000 seats, you just clap your hands and go, and then these are, these are some of the things that happen. But then even this person has no label, no nothing, you, can't, you don't have a fallback position even to say, look here, I bought this from you, and this is happening. Then of course, we are as farmers, like we are trained the farmers, the farmer has to be trained, the workers have to be trained, Documents and records, you have to record when did you plant, when did you do this, when did you buy this, you know? All these things have to be done as farmers if you were going to do something very well. And of course, review the practices. You review them. If you did it last time, is it the same? So I'm a vet and before I treat an animal, I always make sure as much as I've been using the same drug, I'll have to read and say, hmm, maybe it might, it might have changed, you know? So you have to read and find out so this business of saying, no, I did it last time, my grandmother did it, we did it, so things change. So you have to make sure that you review your practices. Yeah, so again, we are still on food safety, uh, harvesting and handling the produce. So you've done, you've grown, you've done all this, but then harvesting. You have to make sure that maybe when you harvest, not even maybe, but when you harvest, you know, recently, I was in Hoima last week, let me tell you this story. So I'm in Hoima, I come back, I only came back actually for, for this. So, in Kampala, there are no grasshoppers. So I find them in Hoima, I'm very happy. I'm like, ooh. So I asked some guy to get me the grasshoppers, and I, they, they, get me, they, get, they get me grasshoppers, which are not, the ones that were available are the ones not done, not plucked. So I'm like, it's okay, I'll take them home. Oh my God, when I get home, I've never seen such grasshoppers. Beetles, uh, cockroaches. <laughs> because, you know, I think the person just harvested them. I think we harvested grasshoppers, right? <laughs> so I think the person harvested them from ground, maybe in the night, so I, I, I didn't eat the grasshoppers. They were too, too contaminated. Like, so my 30,000 went down the drain. So, so how are we harvesting our things? Of course, do you think I'm going to go back to that person? I will not. So actually I said, now those grasshoppers in Hoima, out of the picture. I'll wait when they fall in Kampala. But I don't know when that will be. So, uh, so harvesting and handling, you see? How, even, how have you harvested? Which equipment are you using to harvest, okay? Um, especially for people like, again, I'll give an example for tomatoes. Tomatoes, there's a way, especially if you are to the shelf life. Sometimes if you just pluck it off, uh, there's this green thing, the stalk. So there's a way you harvest it so that you want it to have a longer shelf life. If you pluck it off instantly, then it's not going to stay longer. So all those, are th those things. And if you pluck it and you go to a contract to supply and you bring it like that, the supplier will be like, the person you're supplying them to will be like, we'll reject them. So all these things, so equipment, the containers we are using. Now let me go back, maybe with plants it's a little bit, but now when it comes to lives of milk, how are you milking the cow? How are you, like, is, it, is the pail um, clean, you know? All these things, like the container clean. And then the structures, where you are keeping the harvest. Some of us, after we harvested, we just throw things anyhow. Maybe when you see how we harvest coffee, so, uh, they will harvest coffee, they will harvest the yellow berry, the green berry, and the red, okay? But you're supposed to only harvest maybe the red ones, the red, the, 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 that are ready. But because someone is like, ah, they don't mind, so all these things will be rejected at the end of the day. But imagine you've done all this so well, you did the right standards, you bought the right seeds, and then you lose it all at harvest, okay? So it's very, very important. Then, sometimes even where we harvest from, or our storage, or they are the, the, the whatever they in, in the storage. Maybe they are also pests. You know, sometimes you want to keep maize longer, so you, you harvest maize and it's at uh, the prices are not good. 
Then you're like, oh, I'm going to, let me wait a little bit. And then how have you stored the maize? And then we normally use, people normally use some kind, I've forgotten what it's called, some preservative, but is it the right preservative to use? Again, I was talking to William and he told me, what did he tell me? I think they rejected something of yours somewhere because he used maybe the wrong, the, the wrong... Wrong combine harvest. Ah, you see, harvesting. He used the wrong combine harvester. Meanwhile, this one is even high, a combine harvester. Those things we studied in geography. Hmm? <laughs> but of course, he's, um, he's at a, a large scale in Noya, so combine harvesters are here right now. So when you harvest even with the wrong machine, you've done everything right, but at the harvest, it's the wrong machine. You lose it all. Uh, personal hygiene, the people harvesting, have they washed their hands? Have they done this? All these things matter, okay? Have they washed their hands? And the produce, how do we pr treat the produce again? So we are in this place again in Hoima. So we are, and then this person says, he harvested something and, and I, I think it was a story when they were de dealing with the trade links. And he said, but these people, even the Busisi, eh? the Busisi, you know Busisi, those tiny black insects, the very tiny ones, I think they're the smallest insects. So this person is like, you see, I have rested, I did everything, and then I only brought this, and then Muzungu tells me, well, was it a Muzungu ever tells me, no, he rejected it because it had Busisi. Hmm? And then this person, for him, in his mind, is like, even this tiny thing, there was no soil, it had just had Busisi. <laughs> But that is rejected already. So, how are you uh, harvesting your produce and treating it? Yes, storage again and transport, okay? So I just put that again, you see, timing. When, what have you harvested? When did you harvest? What time? The temperatures, where are you storing them? All these things, even if you've done everything right at the beginning, the right soil, the water, everything, at the end of harvesting, you can lose everything. Then, environmental management. Site history and management, okay? Planting material. Soil, again, it goes back. Now, how do we do environmental? Because our site history, you have to know that sometimes the site is very good, but then what you're going to plant, maybe you're planting high on a slope, and whatever you're going to plant is going to still affect the environment, okay? In terms of maybe you're degrading, or you're actually putting, you're putting these things in the, in the swamp, you know? Because if you are growing in the swamp, then you are going to water, you are going to affect the swamp, and then later it floods. You see all these things. Yes, you can land reclaim, but at the same time you have to think about what you're doing. Then planting material again. Which planting material? Again, it's better if you use like a planting material which is resistant. Okay, maybe to disease or pests. That means if you do that, then you are going to use less. You're going to use less uh, chemicals to spread, okay? So you're thinking, you're doing things, thinking about the environment at the end of the day. Then soil substrates again. Which soil? What are you adding in? How? Fertilizer. Then water. How much water are you using? Are you use over irrigating? Because sometimes you can be in a place, or maybe like uh, again on a hill, and then when you're irrigating, you're not, you didn't put contours, you didn't put all these things. So all these things matter. Hmm? Then waste management, energy efficiency, mm? so that when whatever you do, that like if you've grown this thing, if you, uh, if uh, example maybe if it's cattle that has given you dung or pigs or chickens, where are you taking the waste? How are you getting rid of this waste? Are you just throwing it at the neighbor's place? Is it contaminating the neighbor? So all these things you have to think about because if you don't. Like uh, when we are going to go at the end where like uh, people coming to do health and safety checks and whatever, that's how they will find you and your storage, your everything is bad, you will still lose it. So you have to make sure everything is right. Um, worker health and safety and welfare. So again, I put, I think this, hmm? where is it? It's not moving, okay. Um, you see one side, this person is, we are showing you the how normally Ugandans are when we go to work. So we just work in like trousers or half this side, okay? We're not even minding, you're not minding. And you see, uh, some of us here can be very good CEOs, very good uh, maybe managers. You can even be a health and safety, uh, maybe auditor, 
And if you own a farm, you find that even your worker is not putting on protective gear. Mm -hmm. Your worker may not be putting on protective gear, but you have this person who is checking everyone. So please, our workers, we have to mind about our workers. Okay, how are they protected? So this side, like you're saying, it's safe. And it, so all this depends on which kind of farm it is and which kind of work it is, okay? You don't necessarily have to buy all this, but depending on where. Like we, on farms, of course, if you look at this gentleman, I think they were picking, is it coffee? No, not coffee. It must be tea. But you see, he's properly covered and, you know, so that as he's picking, his, his clothes are not really tarnish, and then he's okay. Hmm? Uh, so working conditions. How are your working? How are your workers? How do they sleep? Where do they sleep? How do they eat? Hmm? Do they have a toilet? Is it? Is this toilet maybe shared by male, female? You know, bathrooms. All these things you have to think about. Sometimes some of us think workers are workers. Yes, they are, but they're human beings at the end of the day. Okay. So make sure that they are really properly catered for. Hygiene, their personal hygiene. How often do they wash, as in when they are doing something, okay? We have a policy like um, at the farm, we call it washing, wash out. Before you enter the pigs, you have to wash all yourself and then you put on protective gear and then you enter. Because we don't know where, we are preventing the animals, we are preventing disease to animals. But also, okay, even when the person gets out of the piggery, they will still wash and then go elsewhere because we don't want him to go everywhere and smell for everyone okay so worker welfare okay how are they all this and then training for the workers you have to train them even to use this protective gear okay so uh of course when i put the other picture it would be like ah that is for white i think he helmets now this picture there's this lady there there's that lady there and those gentlemen so you see, and I think one of these gentlemen is here. I, who can identify that gentleman? He's somewhere here. So there's a gentleman there in gum boots, okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a gentleman there in gum boots in a green overall. And then there are also the other side in a green overall. But it's all about showing you that protective gear. And that lady still can comfortably. I, I, was, I was talking to someone on the table, and that person says that they watch that lady on TV. And she was so hands-on, she, she's not like the lady she find, he finds in boardrooms, okay? Yeah, but when it's work, it's work. And even you as the owner, you must make sure, so when you set rules as the owner, make sure you follow them to the letter. Otherwise, uh, your, your workers will not um, follow it as well. Yeah, so I was showing you that even simple protective gear, so it doesn't have to be expensive with like, the oil and gas with helmets and whatever, but you know, simple protective gear to make sure that you still work properly. And then produce and quality. Um, produce. Again, quality plan. Because so you are like, okay, I'm harvesting, I'm going to grow my turkey. Or I'm going to grow, I'm, I'm growing livestock, chickens, um, either broiler, or layer or you know whatever i suggest that this uh, my i suggest that my my you put you put me up there so because i need to show this slide i need to show okay yeah that's better yeah i needed to to make sure that you see that okay because normally when we have rest again okay normally when we have rest you're like, yes, I've invested, but how do we store us? Okay, you put pallets on the floor and then so that there's good aeration somewhere. Because at the end of the day, you remember when the Kenyan said aflatoxins for maize? I have a feeling, I don't know, this is my this is my thought really. I have a feeling, okay, yeah. No farmer, I know we like money, but in my heart, because when I saw what I saw on TV, I just knew it is storage, and it was storage, I think, in Kenya. I hope there's no Kenyan here. <laughs> I thought it was storage in Kenya because when they showed the way they had stored everything like and I'm like hmm I think it came we did everything right in Uganda I'm thinking and then we go to Kenya the way they were storing everything the, the, the sacks of meat was just on the floor the rooms were not aerated and then we lost business we lost business which I don't think we should have lost so storage is very very important buying silos doing all this so if you don't have silos just get a room as big as this should be open 
because don't put air conditioning, but should be open. And then you put sleds, uh, there's sleds here, we call them sleds, down or pallets. And, okay, so but then you have to have a plan that I'm planting maize, I'm planting maize. So where am I going to store? I've planted coffee. Where am I going to put when I'm drying? Okay, I've planted all these things. What am I going to do? Okay. Unfortunately, this slide, um, there's a slide missing. I think I, um, there's, there's something I wanted to show you in the newspapers last week on the 16th. <laughs> there was a newspaper uh, when we talk about quality inputs. And then they had got, um, what are they called? The police had impounded. Did you read that? I think it was on, th on Thursday. Police had impounded, Wednesday or Thursday, had impounded people who were giving uh, inputs, okay, agro inputs, and they were all fake. And some of them actually were imported. So where do they pass? Hmm? So we have to think about that as well. So quality plant, planting material, again, why I'm saying this again, planting material, how good is the quality? Again, fertilizer, these, these things, how are they? Are they of good quality? Because most of them could be expired, most of them, again, it goes back if they are not of good quality, it impinges on you. The amount of water, what kind of water are you using to wash the produce, especially if it's for vegetables or anything, okay? Um, again, there's a long time ago, the UN, I don't know if it's still doing the same, it says a standard word. Okay. All right, I'll be done. Uh, it says a standard that when you supply them eggs, they only eat eggs for three days. So they have to be day zero, day one, until day three. You supply eggs which are three days longer. And then, so this Ugandan, you know what this Ugandan did? This Ugandan put the one day, two days on the tray up, and then put the rest down. So this one, oh, these are very nice eggs. Then they also went for the for the trays down, and they were bad because they were, you know, an egg you can tell the age of the egg. You can tell an age of the egg by just breaking it and knowing. So this person lost business because they gave the wrong uh, age of the eggs. Okay. Then uh, we've already talked about harvesting and handling. So I was just showing this gentleman in in, in my talk with my talk, and you see. They are preparing because they know they are going to store them well. And then with this one, you actually now go back to even which species, when you say planting material. If it's matoke, what does it mean? There are different species of matoke that this type of matoke has a longer shelf life. Okay? So matoke is, I think, chibuzi that has a longer shelf life. So if you have to keep in mind that, oh, I'm going to export matoke, or I'm going to supply matoke somewhere longer, so I need a, a, a species that has a longer shelf life. So you have to put all that in perspective. Again, traceability. Hmm? I think, okay. And then general requirements. Farm level. So now, at farm level, yeah, you have to be legally, uh, you have, like you see, you are, yes, you are an SME, but then you have to have registered you have to have visitor requirements. I'll give you an example. At my farm, you don't enter actually. If you want to come, you want to see pigs, you don't enter. I don't let you into my piggery. So those are the, I don't even mind. I don't let you, I don't let you into my piggery unit. And if you must, you have to have washed. I have to give you protective gear. I have to give you so many things, okay, for you to enter. Because I don't want you to bring this to me. Then addressing complaints. Because how are you going? You will supply and someone complains to you that so you have to have systems that are going to say okay listen to people's complaints so that you change sometimes a bad comment at that time feels bad but it's something that is going to help you that means there's something wrong you're doing okay and if you do it right the better calibration that okay what am i supplying how many uh either is it how many trays am i supplying how many bars am i supplying how many these am i supplying how many stacks am i doing then if, as, if you're a group, then you have to still be legal, you have to have the legal documents, you have to have a written contract like William was telling us. He has a written term contract with uh, He was actually, he has a bad story about COVID, by the way, very bad. He lost a client 
who was paying him highly. So when the first pandemic hit, it, it, the, the client died. So did you have a written contract with him or with the company, with the one? So those, those are things. So now we can no longer supply to that company and it maybe if it had written contract or they had, you know, the, the rest of the company would continue uh, picking stuff from him. Producer register. Hmm? We can be like, yes, uh, I'll give an example. Pure Agro, I think, has very many farmers that they're supplying, that are, that are supplying to it, but then you know, you want to know which farmer, which farmer gave me this? Where did I get this from? Where do I, you get it? So that again, you have to have, you have a fallback position. Then organizational structure. I understand, yeah, people say uh, this working in the oil and gas is very tough, uh, very, but they want to know, like, we have just been talking about the bank. The bank was like, no, you have to have these things. Let me tell you something. If you want to be, and there's a lot of money, we hope there's a lot of money coming in, right? And we've just seen from Akama, Atama, Akatama, eh? Atakama. Yeah, we've just heard from him. So, but you can't, they can't give you, why sometimes banks are asking for these things? They want to know how good you are, how big you are, can you manage this? Can you manage this, uh, this contract? Hmm? Can you manage this contract? So that's why they look at the organization structure. They will ask you for, um, I forgot when they ask you the banks, anyway. Then, competence and training to staff. Is your staff competent enough? Is it trained? to even work on the farm or even to deliver so many other things as well. Quality manual, do you have a quality manual? Let me tell you something. If you notice every part of my slide had something to do with quality or something we keep saying, if you're going to work in the oil and gas, you can't run away from quality. That one, you do other things, you do other things, but quality is key. You can't, you can't run away from it, so you have to make sure you work Said so document control. You have all these documents, complaint handling, internal audit, non-competent, compliance, all these things, withdraw from cert certified products, common pack house, agreements with the buyer. Hmm? You have to have an agreement with the buyer if you are so many. You have to have an agreement. Subcontracting, all these things. And you have to have all this paperwork in place if you must work in the oil and gas sector. So of course, at the end of the day, all these uh, standards will join the farmer, the, you know, all these people, farmer, all this produce, reduce risk, everything is there to reduce uh, either contamination. And I know that the way quality is very important. You just want to reduce contamination. You just want to make sure that people don't fall sick because you're going to supply these things to people and they'll fall sick. Thank you.